What's happening? You look nervous. <laughs> this is Dash the Birthday Shepherd. Yeah. That's not me. That's not for me. That's not for me. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> so, what's up? Probably very annoying by the sound of it, usually is. It never works out well. He's, Gavin's cooking pigeons on light bulbs. I'm not sure what's going to happen next. He's kind of wandering about, isn't he? He's still a man out of time, sort of, I think. Could be interesting. Yeah, where do you pick up the I don't know. You have to ask Andrew that, because that's that's a plan that they, they've had for a little bit. But uh, I think it's, it, it's, it's basically exploring the family dynamic again, and my end of the family dynamic. So I think it's very much a theme this year. No, hate them both. <laughs> um, not as people, well, not as much as people. Yeah. No, but as characters, it's like, drives me crazy. What? Um, how do you feel your character? Go on, story, ask me the question. How do you feel your character's story arc will change this season? This season? I might get what I want. There you go. And I'll be dead again, okay. so that'll be it. It'll be over for me, as usual. Like I always get killed at what? Then what? The show be over? <laughs> I don't know. I kind of got what I wanted for a bit, didn't I? Before, before Demon Dean, and I got bored with it. So it's not always good if I get what I want. I guess you're right. Nobody's ever really mad on this show, right? Oh, I probably will be. <laughs> I'm pissing off enough people as it goes. I called, I called, And I called Andrew up. I actually have a long-running gag with, um, with Bob, both Bob and Jeremy for years that I would call up and the first thing I would say is, so am I dead yet? And Jeremy would always say, oh, I'm writing that now. Funny you should ask, I'm writing your death now. So it was an ongoing thing. So now Jeremy's on another show, I'm actually still gonna call him up and ask him, am I dead yet? Go, uh, yes, apparently. Did you spend seasons really maybe like wanting to go close Yeah, I mean, there's a certain amount of redundancy to big bads, you know, in that context. So. I don't know. I, I always thought it would be interesting if it was a big sacrificial play. But, I mean, killing Crowley now doesn't make any sense at all. The first time... ...deciding to, to kill me, they actually called me and said, we're killing you off, but don't worry, you're back in 16. So it was one of those. And there was a reason for it, you know, burning the bones, and we've done all that stuff. He kill me off, it would just be, what, what would be the point? And jumping vessels, we've done... We've done Lucifer, now we're jumping vessels. You heard about Rick Springfield? Yeah. Cool. It's going to be exciting. He's really good, actually. He's a really cool guy. Um, well, yeah. Well, Mark sings a bit. I play drums, so it could be fun. We could start a band. Holy hell, no. Um, the oh shit, no. <laughs> the opposite of oh god. Um, no, it's fun. It's really fun. But... Uh, I'm really excited to see where this is going. You know, I'm proud to be part of it and good to see. I said, I actually talked to Peter Roth the other day and I said, uh, wow, 12 seasons. He goes, yep, halfway there. <laughs> yeah, I think Max and the rest of our kids would be working on seasons 15 onwards, you know. What but would we'll you see. imagine the wrap-up party would look like? It'd be noisy and messy. The 200th was noisy and messy, but it was good. We've done a few, but uh, I'm excited. 300 would be an amazing goal. Longest running uh, genre series in American history. I think it's incredible. It's an amazing thing to be part of. Yeah, I, I came on as a guest star. You know, it's like, what the hell? At the beginning, how far did you see this going for you? For me? Yeah. It was a couple of episodes. And, you know, I only did it because uh, Kim would have wanted me to do it. I knew Kim well. And he, was, and he passed and, and said, uh, I said, it came up. And I was like, Ugh. Ben wrote it. And I was like, oh, okay, this is perfect. I'm kissing a guy under the crossroads. I'm like, okay, this is going to be fun. <laughs> so I was like, okay, we'll see what happens. It might be fun. And then it just became this wonderful recurring thing. And, you know, it's a lot, you know, it's a lot, a lot to be said for Bob Singer that I've been kept around this long, you know, through the iterations and changes. I think Bob has been very instrumental in, in making sure I'm still less one way or another. He might not feel that way by the end of the year, but you never know. But... Uh, I, I'm proud to be part of it. I love the guys. We're still interested in the Winchesters. That's what it's about, right? Because if we're not, we're not watching. Much as we love Crowley and Cass and, and everybody else, if we're not interested in the boys, it's not really a show, you know? Maybe the Crowley show. 
Which it really is anyway. But I mean, coming back, bringing it back to it. So for the record books, you're part of two of the longest running sci-fi shows written in the U.S. Doctor Who. Well, I'm part of, I'm part of the longest running sci-fi show of all time and the longest running genre show in American history. Yeah. Awesome. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, what will I do now? <laughs> I think I'll open a chapeau shop. The series is Killing Crowley. No, it's called O Crowley, and it's a comedy. <laughs> and the end of every scene is O Crowley. <laughs> we good? Yeah, we're good. Thank you, guys. Pleasure. Thank you.